Please hang up and try again. Welcome back. We're going to discuss today how methods work in Java. As a matter of fact, this will be the introduction to uh, different modules of methods. So we will be discussing methods. In other words, is the functionality that we're going to have in Java uh, from, from now on. It's being designed to increase the readability of the program, which means that when you define a method, you're going to basically separate uh, different entities of the program. And now it will be kind of easier to identify what piece of code does what but also help us to debug the program. If you understand what the notion of debug is, we're trying to identify where possible errors, possible exceptions might occur, so that will be that help us to identify the area or the piece of code that actually is responsible for certain problems. Of course, we want to reduce redundancy. In the past, we have seen programs that uses for loops, they uses additional if statements, but there's a lot of redundancy, a lot of repetition of certain pieces of code. Uh, methods help us to reduce that redundancy in different manners. So we'll discuss that later on. And of course, we're going to identify the notion of separation of duties and divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is a principle that we will be using in computer science pretty much for the rest of our lives. Basically, when you have a problem, we're trying to divide it into small pieces. And each piece is responsible to solve a problem in the more smallest way. So we're going to create a couple of examples that demonstrates divide and conquer techniques. So these are at least four of the ideas behind why we need methods in programming. This is not new. Because in the past, we've been working with a couple of methods in different cases. If you probably remember from the very beginning, we use methods like print line, next line, next int. Some of them come directly from scanner. Some of them come directly from string, some of them. And we use the methods, basically, we've been using methods for the past sessions, for the past weeks and they look like this exactly like this one so we'll talk about those items later on as we continue working with methods you will re recognize what is the difference between a method definition and a method call so basically we will talk about um, how to define a method and then once you define it how once you incorporate it into your code later on how are we going to call it uh, this document that I have right now, I'm going to make it available in the website so you guys can follow this directly, just some, some notes how about that. But let me, before we discuss about how they loop the method, we're going to talk about how we break a regular code that we have into small pieces. So for example, for the past weeks, we've been discussing uh, class that is inside well basically the the main method that is inside of the main class in methods when we incorporate the divide and conquer technique we have the class itself again but also not only have one method which is the main method we can have small pieces of code which are different methods method one method two you can continue doing that thing in order to do that we define the method by following the follow by following this formula we need to define an encapsulation type some modifiers a return type and of course the identifier of this method um, what exactly does mean in encapsulation we've been discussing public methods right but this might have a variation of that we might have public methods we can have private methods protected and sometimes we have package but that's a different kind of encapsulation we're going to use. We're going to talk about that later on. But these are the three encapsulation methods that we, uh, I'm sorry, encapsulation types that we have um, in methods. But also might have modifiers. Modifiers help us to perform operations inside or outside of a class. We've been familiar with the static one and the final one. So those are some of the modifiers that we have. In addition, there's other 
uh, modifiers that we can use, but we'll talk about that in, in a different course. At this point, we don't you don't really have to worry about it. And of course, return type can be anything that we have discussed so far. We've been discussing the eight primitive types in Java, but also we can deal with strings and void. The return type is very important because this is how you, you're going to respond back. This is how you're going to guarantee that something is going to give you back once you call the method. So return times are critical. Identifiers are basically the, the name that you're going to have to call your method. We usually use camel case style in methods. And of course, parameters. The parameters we're going to have, um, it, sometimes you need parameters, sometimes you don't. We're going to make an example in a little bit. And basically the example, um, the parameters that we have, it can be any data type, uh, followed by the identification, by the ID and the name of the parameter. We'll talk about that thing. So let's start with a function or a method that we would like to have. If you remember this from math, when you create a function f of x that is given by some operation, we can identify a couple items here. For example, the name of the method, the name of the function here is f. It takes one parameter. Yeah, and inside of this function, there's an operation of x squared plus three. So this is a function in math that we've been discussing for, I don't know, since when you took math, but let's identify the items that we discuss as a method. The name of the function is f, the name of the parameter is x. And of course, when we have a data type, when we call the f of x, it has to be an integer, yeah? Because for example, when I call f of two, internally, we're gonna do two to the power two plus three. We do the addition. And then the result seven is the return item, okay? So we identify all those items right now. So we identify the name of the, of the function, the parameter, the data type of the parameter, and the return type, which is gonna be an int. The only thing that we're missing here is the encapsulation, but we're gonna keep it uh, as a way of doing a public one. So let's come here to the code. And when we call this method, I need you to pay an extra attention here. When you create the method example, yeah, here is when you put the public static void main string args and inside of the main is where we're going to call the function f of x yeah now the the function f of x it says here it will give you a value back as a matter of fact it will give you let's call it y yeah f of x now there's a couple questions here that you have what is x and what is f of x? So x can be a value here, for example, two. And it makes sense here to put it here as a parameter because this is a function f of x that we just created here. Yeah. What we're gonna do inside of the function, I need you to pay extra attention. After the main, after the main, here's when we're gonna create the method. We're gonna start with the public, yeah. We're going to leave it as static because that's the identifier. I'm going to follow this formula that we have here. As a matter of fact, why don't I just copy and paste this thing here? So encapsulation is the public. Modifier is the static. The return type, remember that we need to give back an integer. So this should be int. The name of the method, the ID, what is the name? F. And we require a value as a parameter, X. Now we need to identify the data type of the parameter. So X will be an int. So that makes sense. Okay. So notice that here is where we close the scope of the main. And here's where we close the scope of the function of the method F of X. Here is where we close the entire scope of the class method example of one. So we have two methods. Now we have the main and we have now the f of x. We have two.
Now we're not done. Since we're claiming inside, notice that we're going to write here inside of the curly brackets. We're going to claim that we're going to need an INT. Yeah, I'm going to create here an answer. At the very beginning is zero. And I'm going to make sure I return the answer immediately. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because since we're claiming INT, sure, I'm going to create an INT for you and I'm going to return it right away. ANS is an INT. So I'm following the instructions that I'm following here. So why am I so picky here? Because when we call this function f of, get, f of x from the main, I'm expecting in the left hand side of the equal signs an integer. Yeah, I call it ANS, but you can call it y, it might as well. It doesn't really matter. What matters here is that answer is going to be, let's remind us what the function is. The function is x squared plus 3. So how do we do x squared plus 3? We do x times x plus 3. So x will be provided for you as a parameter. I don't know if you notice, they get highlighted. We're going to square it, x times x, and then we're going to add plus 3. With me? So in the main, once we execute the y or the f of x, we're expecting y. We can actually, um, let's see, we can print y. Matter of fact, why don't we, yeah, y is fine. So let's make it more readable. We can put here f of x. I'm just going to concatenate the value of x inside of here. And then I'll put the y. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to print the value of x will be 2. And then the result of calling f of x, which is y. So if I do this, I'll save it. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the, the quotes. I think I did something wrong here. Oh, here. Yeah, sorry. So I'm going to compile this immediately. Java C for compiling method example of 1.java. And then I'm going to run Java method example 01. Now, notice what's going to happen. I'm going to call it f of x with 2. It's going to come here to f. And then 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So when I come back from calling f of x, y is going to have the value of 7. And I'm just going to print f of, and then concatenate here, 2, equals 2, and then the number 7. So this is the demonstration of method call. Method definition is from line 9 to 13. Method call is on line 4. That's what really matters on method definition and method calls. Method definition, you follow this uh, formula that we have here method call in the main or in any other method you call you invoke the method that is outside and you follow the instructions if you need to follow to expect an int or a double or anything else so if you have any questions please let me know and i will elaborate that thing